are taught by teachers who become mentors to their students, giving the workforce of tomorrow the tools to become active lifelong learners, independent problem solvers, and create a diverse and pluralistic society where every person understands and plays to their strengths, building a fair and self-sustaining model for education rather than knowledge. Universidad Cibeles Moret is here to align Education 4.0 with Industry 4.0. Universidad Cibeles Moret was established on March 11, 1976. As one of the most outstanding universities in Indonesia, Universidad Cibeles Moret has noble ideals to develop the country. Universitas Sabelas Moret is located in the suburban area of Surakarta, colloquially known as Solo, a city in central Java, Indonesia. The city is located within a 50-minute flight from Jakarta and one-hour flight from Bali. Solo is well known as a city of culture and the capital of Batik. Universitas Sabelas Moret Surakarta has grown rapidly over the years. It has positioned itself to become the leading institution in Indonesia. Universita Sabelis Moret strives to provide high quality education develop scientific knowledge and technology products at an international level. With its adequate and appropriate learning infrastructure, Universita Sabelis Moret offers a unique and engaging learning environment and provides integrated IT facilities and information system in a convenient academic atmosphere and green campus area. The library features thousands of books and provides access to a wide variety of international journals, which is expected to enhance the learning of the students, faculty, and researchers. In addition to the fundamental concepts and skills required for a successful career, a graduate of the Universidad Sabelas Moret is armed with soft skills by taking part in various student activities on campus and student organizations both at national and international level. Students also have the opportunity to acquire global experience through student exchange programs global internship programs, multilateral research projects, and other international collaborative activities. Universitas Sabelas Moret encourages all researchers to promote their work through publication in national and international journals, as well as other forms of dissemination, such as presentation at national and international scientific forums. Researchers have produced excellent research products and become engaged in the activities of the community through various community service programs. Active partnership and strong collaborations have become inseparable parts of Universidad Sabelas Moret, without which progress in education, research and community service wouldn't have been achieved. Our international partnerships create ample opportunities for student and staff exchange, research collaboration and community service. International collaboration helps to give a global perspective on learning in order to address global challenges while still functioning in a national environment based on potential and local wisdom. Universitas Sebelas Maret has three main agendas toward our work.
it's time to bring education into the fourth industrial revolution. Flexible, tailor-made curricula are taught by teachers who become mentors to their students, giving the workforce of tomorrow the tools to become active, lifelong learners, independent problem solvers, and create a diverse and pluralistic society where every person understands and plays to their strengths, building a fair and self-sustaining model for education rather than knowledge. Universidad Sibelis Moret is here to align Education 4.0 with Industry 4.0. Universidad Sibelis Moret was established on March 11, 1976. As one of the most outstanding universities in Indonesia, Universidad Sibelis Moret has noble ideals to develop the country. Universitas Sibelis Moret is located in the suburban area of Surakarta, colloquially known as Solo, a city in central Java, Indonesia. The city is located within a 50-minute flight from Jakarta and one-hour flight from Bali. Solo is well known as a city of culture and the capital of Batik. Universitas Sibelis Moret Surakarta has grown rapidly over the years. It has positioned itself to become the leading institution in Indonesia. Universitas Sibelis Moret strives to provide high quality education develop scientific knowledge and technology products at an international level. With its adequate and appropriate learning infrastructure, Universita Sibelis Moret offers a unique and engaging learning environment and provides integrated IT facilities and information system in a convenient academic atmosphere and green campus area. The library features thousands of books and provides access to a wide variety of international journals, which is expected to enhance the learning of the students, faculty, and researchers. In addition to the fundamental concepts and skills required for a successful career, a graduate of the Universidad Sibelis Moret is armed with soft skills by taking part in various student activities on campus and student organizations both at national and international level. Students also have the opportunity to acquire global experience through student exchange programs global internship programs, multilateral research projects, and other international collaborative activities. Universitas Sibelis Moret encourages all researchers to promote their work through publication in national and international journals, as well as other forms of dissemination, such as presentation at national and international scientific forums. Researchers have produced excellent research products and become engaged in the activities of the community through various community service programs. Active partnership and strong collaborations have become inseparable parts of Universidad Sibelis Moret, without which progress in education, research and community service wouldn't have been achieved. Our international partnerships create ample opportunities for student and staff exchange, research collaboration, and community service. International collaboration helps to give a global perspective on learning in order to address global challenges while still functioning in a national environment based on potential and local wisdom. Universitas Plus Marav has three main agendas toward a world-class university. Acceleration and various field of development is needed by embracing the foundation of ONS, 
Benteng Pancasila. Therefore, five strategic policy pillars were decided. gladly welcome you to explore and experience our program and to enjoy our campus life which depicts a blend of cultural power, professional life, and technological advance. Universidad Cebelas Moret, toward a world-class university. Basic human needs for food, sustainable energy, environmental quality, and biomaterials have become one of the greatest challenges for the future of humanity. One of the biggest issues that our world is facing over the next 50 years is, how can we feed 9 billion people? University of Sibelis Moret is located in the suburban area of Surakarta, colloquially known as Solo, a city in central Java, Indonesia, around 100 kilometers away from Borobudur one of the greatest Buddhist temples in the world. The city is located within a 50-minute flight from Jakarta and one-hour flight from Bali. Solo is well known as a city of culture and the capital of Batik. The Faculty of Agriculture of 11 Maret University strives to provide excellent education, high-quality research, and applicable community services in the field of integrated sustainable agriculture, both national and international level. With its adequate and appropriate learning facilities and infrastructure, the Faculty of Agriculture offers a unique and engaging learning environment and provides integrated local field and laboratory experiences for students to learn better and have more profound comprehension about the agricultural science. The library features thousands of books and provides access to a wide variety of international journals, which is expected to enhance the learning of the students, faculty, and researchers. The Faculty of Agriculture allows students to study and obtain professional knowledge in specific aspects of agriculture based on their interest and conduct research and community service that encourage integrated and sustainable agriculture development. In addition to the fundamental concepts and skills required for a successful career in agriculture, a graduate of the Faculty of Agriculture is armed with soft skills by taking part in various student activities on campus and student organizations both at national and international level. Students also have the opportunity to acquire global experience through student exchange programs and other international collaborative activities. The Faculty of Agriculture University encourages all researchers to promote their work through publication in national and international journals, as well as other forms of dissemination, such as presentation at national and international scientific forums. Researchers have produced excellent research products and become engaged in the activities of the community through various community service programs.
International collaboration has become integral to higher education in the 21st century. To extend its network, the Faculty of Agriculture has set up and maintained good cooperation with more than 21 higher education and research institutes from 12 countries for collaborative academic as well as research projects. Integrated and sustainable agriculture is an alternative solution for facing the global challenge. And for this action, we are here! The Faculty of Agriculture of Universitas Sabelas Moret. It's time to bring education. <laughs>
and on behalf of Department of Food Science and Technology Faculty of Agriculture, I would like to invite you to the third International Guest Lecture Week 2020 in day three with a topic of recent updates on food engineering. Today, we will have a lecture from Associate Professor Dr. Waraporn Bunsuptik from Kasutsart University, Thailand. Before we begin the event, I would like to invite all of you to listen to Indonesia's national anthem, Indonesia Raya. Please join us with silence. Let me first of all introduce you to the agenda today. So first, we will start with an opening speech from Dr. Danar Prasetyanga as the head of Department of Food Science and Technology, Universitas 11 Maret. And second, we will have a lecture from our invited guest, Associate Professor Dr. Waraporn Bunsukti from Kasutsart University, and a discussion moderated by Dr. Ahmad Ridwan Ariantoro from Universitas 11 Maret. And lastly, closing. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, we are now going to listen to the opening speech delivered by Dr. Danar Prasetyanga as the head of Department of Food Science and Technology, Universitas 11 Maret. To Dr. Danar Prasetyanga, time is yours. Thank you, Ms. MC. The Honorable Associate Professor Dr. Warapon Butsumti from Kassad University, Thailand. Colleges from Faculty of Agriculture, and in particular from the Department of Food Science and Technology, all participants of the third International Guest Lecture Weeks of Food Science and Technology, and students from the Department of Food Science and Technology, Universitas Plus Maret. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and good morning to all of you. Personally, and on behalf of the Department of Food Science and Technology, Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas Plus Maret, UNS, I would like to welcome you to the third International Guest Lectures Week of Food Science and Technology. This is the annual event organized by the Department of Food Science and Technology that is usually conducted in a parallel with the event of International Conference on Food Science and Engineering held by our institution. This activity is supported by the world-class world university program by Universitas Blas Marat, and it will be lasted this week from October 12th to 15, 20, 2020, as one of our contribution on World Food Day on October 16th this year. It is our great honor, and I'm very pleased that this activity we can invite a world-class scientists whose affiliations are from three different countries, UK, Thailand, and Malaysia, that are really experts in their respective fields. Thank you for all the lecturers for their valuable time to give a lecture and to share their experiences and expertise in 
the third International Guest Lecture Week of Earth Science and Technology. I hope this activity can be really meaningful, in particular for our students, our future generation, to get more insights about recent issues in food technology and related areas. This is highly important because the students need to learn about global trend in the world, and moreover, we can learn from the COVID-19 that food sector is really able to survive to this uh, situation of pandemic. Therefore, I'm confident the lecture from all of the lectures can convince all the students that they take the right choice for studying in the Department of Food Science and Technology in Faculty of Agriculture, UNS. Last but not the least, I do hope that after this activity, the communication between our institution and all the speakers can be continued, and therefore, we can initiate a collaboration in the future for various activities, including research and academic exchange activities. Finally, I would like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to organizing team that prepared and made this event run successfully. And to fulfill the request from the organizing team, I would like to officially open the third International Guest Lecture Week of Food Science and Technology by Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Please enjoy and learn from an insightful lecture that will be delivered by Associate Professor Dr. Warapon Gutsumti from Kasat University today. Thank you very much, Hoffman Karp. <laughs> Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I give the time back to MC. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, continuing to the next agenda is guest lecture by Associate Professor Dr. Warapon Gunsuptit. The lecture will be moderated by Dr. Ahmad Ridwan Ariantoro. Dr. Ahmad Ridwan Ariantoro obtained his doctoral degree at Gifu University, Japan, majoring on utilization of biological resource. His research interests are in physical chemistry and chemical engineering, focusing on functionality of starch-based products. Now, he is working as a lecturer at the Department of Food Science and Technology, Universitas 11 Maret. So without any further ado, please welcome Dr. Ahmad Ridwan Ariantoro. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning to all of you. Thank you, MC, for that nice introduction. Uh, my name is Dr. Ahmad Ridwan Ariantoro, a staff academic of Department of Food Science and Technology, Universitas 11 Maret. Today, I feel very honored to sit here as a moderator for the third day of the International Guest Lecture Week on Food Science and Technology. This event on behalf by Department of Food Science and Technology, Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas 11 Maret, Surakarta. Today, we will listen a lecture from a remarkable speaker, Professor Warapon Bonsumtif from Kasat Sat University, Thailand. But uh, before continuing on the lecture, let me read a brief introduction of the today's speaker. Professor Warapon is a professor of Department of Food Science and Technology, Faculty of Agroindustry, Kasat Sat University, Thailand. At present, she also chairman of Master Program in Food Engineering, Kasat Sat University. She did her Master Study of Food Science in Rutgers at the State University of New Jersey and then achieved her doctoral degree in field of food science in Rogers, the State University of New Jersey. Her research area includes process optimization, application of health transfer concepts, self life extension, and prediction. In that field, she has published 60 articles in academic journal and conference proceedings. She also gets 60 honors, and her eighth index corpus is nine. Before we start the lecture, I would like to request all the students, staff, and other participants to please switch off or your microphone during the lecture. After the lecture finish, you will be allowed to turn on your microphone for asking questions directly to the speaker. All right. Now it's time for me to give the next one hour to Professor Warapon to share your presentation. Professor Werepon will give us the lecture about recent update on food engineering. I think it's an interesting topic. <laughs> Professor Werepon, the time is yours. Thank you so much, Dr. Ahmed. 
Let me share the screen. Okay, you can share screen. Okay. Okay, I think it's good. Okay. It's good? Okay. okay, good. Uh -huh. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's nice to be here. Um, I'm gonna, uh, today I'm going to give a talk on recent updates on food engineering. And uh, I think this topic is quite big, you know, there's uh, a lot of updates on food engineering. So I will just share you some of the updates then. Uh, actually, well, food engineering involved in uh, engineer, we use the concept of agricultural, mechanical, and chemical engineer, right? And also combined with the microbiology and physical science and also chemistry, using math and management skill to manage all this you know, knowledge to help to prepare food material and convert into the products. And also we try to develop operation or machine to uh, develop product with cost effective. Under this that duty, we have done a lot of work on uh, pro uh, develop product and also develop process. Right. For food engineer, for process, we, if we're looking at the product, oh, sorry, uh, if we're looking at product, what we do is try to do formulation on the product, right? But formulation engineer, we try to, in this day, the formulation not just to put, uh, you know, this and that and make it delicious, but we have to focus on the uh, bio uh, availability because it's the health concern this day, right? So engineer will come and help the formulation with the mathematics and try to do it with the computer age, you know, how to mix what ingredient and mix with what process to make the formulation and produce product with good dig digestion, absorption, and bio availability. And not just that, if once we have the formulation, we also have to concern on the appearance of the, the food also. This day is very popular on the designs of the food. So engineer will come and help on the designs, you know, because when we, uh, design formulation or we design machine or process, we have to think of beauty of the food also. This is uh, one thing that's the most important. And other thing about process, food engineer have to develop machine, right? So the machine, the trend right now, we moving from uh, thermal processing into the non-thermal processing. Actually, we cannot say that we're moving from thermal to non-thermal because we're still using thermal processing, but we use different sources of uh, heating. In the past, we use like heating coil, like fuel to create heat, right? You, we do heat transfer of conduction convection, but recently we have uh, other heating source like microwave, ohmic heating, electric field, and infrared heating, which being developed. Some has been used, like for example, microwave, and uh, for ohmic heating is becoming popular. And we, we have been, uh, in my department, we also having uh, microwave and ohmic heating research, you know, very active right now. And for non-thermal, we also having a new novel process in, in uh, food engineer. Like we use the light, cold plasma, super uh, critical fluid. This is quite uh, old, but also having ultrasonic wave and high pressure. And the trend is that not only one single process, uh, recently we try to combine. For example, like with freezing, we use uh, microwave freezing, we use ultrasound freezing, we use high pressure freezing. It's kind of mixed up using uh, several parameters uh, to create a good process for, uh, to create product. 
So this is the trend in terms of developing process. You can see I, I collect some of the novel food processing here. You can uh, study on later. For example, see right now we're using robotics in, in, in many uh, technology. You can go through later, okay, in this emerging technology. Okay. So engineer would involve in formulation, in design, in machine, and also the most important thing right now is software, right? So software is mathematical model of the, all the parameters that link together and use all the parameters to control food quality and food safety. When you have the uh, hardware like machine, and you want to go for automation, you have to use software to control the machine. So this area is quite active right now. And as you see, we want to go for industry 4.0 ecosystem using crowd, using sensor, using big data, and this will come to food factory. So food engineer is very important right now. Actually, uh, the most developed uh, kind of robots for food uh, factory is on the robots for movement, right? To move objects from one place to another. But robots for control quality and food safety, we, we don't have much of that knowledge. But knowledge of movement like this one, the video, I really like this video because uh, I don't know uh, if I can share the video right now, but you can uh, go back and go to this link. Let me see if you can see. Ah, okay, you can see this video. This is how advanced on uh, food engineering and being used in the factory right now. Can you see the video? Not yet, Professor. Not, not yet, bro. That's a... That's it. Let me see. Okay. So the video is on? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's okay. on. It's on, it's on. It's on, okay, good. Okay. You see, um, this one, they use technology to move, you know, object from one place to another. I think we are really successful in moving object using robots you know, without human being. And this one to use uh, laser cutting using 3D scanner and X-ray, they can cut, you know, they know the machine knows where is the bones, where's the meat. They can cut exactly, you know, for the meat to leave and then the bones very clean. I think that is very amazing for the technology right now. But the thing is, the can how can I go back to the uh, slide? Okay.
Okay. As you can see, well, food engineering helping the food man manufacturing is really, you know, go to the very advanced point that uh, we don't need human being in the factory. But uh, I think one thing that is more important is that the uh, we can create a robot to move things from one place to another. But the critical one is that we cannot uh, finish the software to control some really critical point. For example, uh, retort. We cannot make it uh, fully automation like, okay, food come and when the, you have problem with steam, heating, how the machine can adjust uh, automatically. Things that we're missing is the software to control the machine. And software, we cannot do the software because we don't have uh, knowledge enough on mathematical modeling on food quality and safety in related to the uh, process parameter. This is the area that is uh, being active right now, and I think it's really important uh, to develop uh, to 4.0. I found one paper of Dr. Augusto talking about trend and opportunity in food processing. I think it's very interesting and good conclusion, so I will share some issue with you. Like, uh, he said, well, in the past, when we develop food processing, we focus on making the food safe only because in the past we don't know why the food is get spoiled and how it can make uh, people sick when eating food, right? So at the beginning, they try to make it safe, okay, to kill the microbe. And then after we can kill the microbe, make it safe, and we, but then we think of how to prolong shelf life to make it, you know, keeping in a long time. But once we success to produce food to keep in a long time, like one year, two years, something like that, we think we concern of nutrition, right? Because like uh, canned food, we can keep it for one year or one and a half year and we concern of the nutrition. Is it gonna be enough for our body? Then after we, that's why you have the functional food to come for this topic. And then we look for sensorial because after we try to make the food to be nutritious, it's not delicious, right? So that's the next concerns. After we concern with the sensorial, then we concern with well-being. So when we, we want to have food with safety, have long shelf life, have good nutrition, and delicious, and then well-being, we want to have food with healthiness, right? Then later on, we plus good environment also. This is at the moment, right? For the next, what do you think? Student can answer me after my presentation, you know, what's next? That's, that's the question. We want safety, we get safety, we want long shelf life, we get shelf life, is it, right? And we want nutrition, we want delicious, we want healthy, we want healthy environment, and what's next to do? So it's your job and my job, right? <laughs> and then also the technologies have been developed. We use technology in the past, we used analog, right now we use digital. So this will combine everything and give you an answer what's next. Digital, what digital can do, what digital can help as a tool for you to develop things that you want. The question is, do we have safety in our food? Do you believe that everything that you eat from a food factory is safe? This is a really big question and it's a question for food engineer and also food, science, uh, food uh, microbiologists and food chemists. Is it safe? If you are doing a good job or not, that's the question. 
And well, we have this question because we still see outbreak, right? Outbreak of food poisoning, right? And especially outbreak from norovirus. Actually, in the past, when we concerned about food safety, when we try to uh, make the food safe, we concern of uh, Clostridium botulinum, right? We concern of a lot of bacteria. We don't keep about much on virus. But recently, this is uh, 2018. In Europe, we have a big foodborne outbreak, and 20% of that because of norovirus. And you see hepatitis A virus also in frozen strawberry, actually frozen food, right? Can, we, can the virus survive in a frozen food? It's very difficult, and you have an outbreak. And in strawberry, which considered as acid food, which is low risk in general, but you still find virus. So that give a question mark on our system for safety, is that we are doing a good job or not. And also seeing a lot of mycotoxin. And now, COVID-19 virus. Is this a foodborne disease or not? You don't, we don't know yet. But recently, I, we heard that maybe COVID-19 virus is on frozen salmon, right? Have you heard of that news? Yeah. So is this the guarantee safety in consumption? Do we have enough knowledge? We have a lot of high technology, but why we still have outbreak? of food poisoning. The thing is that recently we found new organisms and virus in food become more important. So is it the time for food engineer and food microbiologists to really study the growth and the death of virus in food products? and also focus on mycotoxins and also using non-conventional technology to kill this virus or some other you know, emerging uh, my microbes. But to me, I don't know when we try to develop non-conventional technologies, for example, using microwave, using light, using ultrasound, using magnetic field, is that a good idea or not? Is that accelerates the mutation of the microbes or not? That's why we cannot achieve fully, you know, completely achieve safety of food. Another point is that after so basically, we have to focus on uh, not only new microbes. We have to come back and, and think that uh, when we try to prolong shelf life. In engineer, we're using microbial kinetics, enzyme activation kinetics, physical chemical reaction changes, right? We use this as a tool to prolong shelf life, to predict the impact of process on food quality and safety. Make it safe and make it long shelf life. We based on the knowledge of mathematical modeling on kinetics. So we can ask food engineer is that we have appropriate models or data or properties modeling is that the models are good enough because we're using the models to predict the child life to predict what temperature for how long that we can kill a certain microbes right when we use the model is that the model is correct if not 
that means some opportunity left, you know, for the food to be unsafe. So right now, I want to, you know, encourage food engineer try to develop appropriate models. Appropriate models, if we look into, for example, the model of microbial inactivation, we have model based on conventional heating. Heating, changing the temperature, right? High temperature killing the microbes. How fast using the kinetics? Normally we use first order kinetics. I think you are familiar with first order kinetics because it's very simple. So people love to use it. Even in functional food, right? How to cofferol degrade over time at certain temperature, how vitamin C, whatever sorts of thing, functional foods also using modeling, which is good. If you don't have model, it's very difficult to develop uh, things faster, right? And you also having computer, you need to use modeling to, to understand the situation, to, to understand the mechanism and, and, and to you know, make conclusion and move forwards from that. But the difficult, the, the, the key issue here is that people love to use first order kinetics. Because first order kinetics cannot be an answer for everything, right? And another assumption that people love to use is that uniform temperature, like in, in a retort or in a freezer, or in a ohmic heating system, every single point in that machine, you assume that it's have the same temperature, right? Or the best is that you said, okay, maybe there's a worst case scenario, you can pinpoint the hot or cold spot and focus, and fo focus on that spot and, and design the process based on that you know, bad scenario and leave the other area to be overcooked or overprocessed. But when you do that, one, one other, another issue may happen. That means some, some of the area you have a very long time heating, right? So you may mutate, helping stimulate the mutation of microbes especially thermal tolerant species. So this is a very big concern right now. But computer, I think, I believe the computer will help you solve these problems. But you need modeling to help you on that. Otherwise, if we keep, you know, heating for a long time, keep uh, prolonging heating, using, using different sources of heating, that, so one thing you have to keep in mind, microbes is a living thing, so it keep, you know, mutating. That's why you have to face with, like recent evidence, like COVID-19 or something like that. You never know. I mean, maybe, I know. see, it's been pointing out that what we have done, maybe there's something needs to fix, to be fixed, okay? And uh, there's uh, some papers found that thermotolerant species rarely follow first order kinetics. So if we keep using it, you, it will give you wrong prediction and wrong mechanism, wrong way. You have, well, so people try to go for a probabilistic approach or statistical approach, right? which you know is statistic right so it's it maybe five percent could be wrong and 95 percent could be right but how about the five percent right people could get sick for five percent of the food that you produce uh -huh. so basically in food engineer we don't uh support the uh probabilistic approach 
but you can use that in the beginning. But you can you use this to create knowledge, and then you have to create or develop into mechanistic model or theoretical based model that will help be helpful. That's the key. Okay. And some other thing is that well. I am not sure in the past or maybe still this day. People try when we we do research. We try to simplify the problems, right? We use a food model, for example, we use sugar instead of uh, some dessert, right? Or use salt or use very simple model when we do study. So. That's kind of uh, giving, sometimes and most of the time, giving a wrong idea, and misleads to the conclusion. So what we believe now, maybe, you know, based on past research, we may have to really look into in the detail and and try to adjust because we have a. Advanced to as the computer, so we need to use that. Then we can, you know, make study on uh, real food, actual condition of process, to see impact of the actual process and actual food composition. Right? If you study on meat, you have to use meat. You cannot use food model. Well, you can. Argue that food model is important. Yes, it is important to get some knowledge. But finally, you have to, you know, study on the actual food and actual process, and then make the final conclusion. And the issue on microbial inactivation for emerging technologies. It's already said emerging technologies. So emerging technologies, it is new, right? So we don't know much of the technology. We don't know much of the impact of the electric city, or wave, a lot of waves, or uh, resistant heat, re whatever things emerging right now. We don't know its thermal, non-thermal effect on food. Microwave, like for example, microwave have heating effect on food, right? It can cook food by heat because microwave generate heat inside of the food, and then the heat can change the food properties and also killing the bacteria. How about the non-thermal effect of microwave? Can have you ever thought of that? Like, what's the non-thermal effect of microwave? Is the wave itself? Right? It's the wave itself. The wave go into the food, generate heat, but the wave itself that move through the food texture, the food, you know, fiber, whatever things. How the wave change the food properties? How the wave change the microbes in the food? These are the key things that food engineer and other scientists. Have to really figure out before, you know, supporting the use of emerging technologies. So the issue we can highlight that the problem is the modeling, the kinetics modeling on flaws or death of microbes. We have to rethink and you know try to use real condition of food and process, and you have to learn more of the modeling methods. Don't use only first order kinetics or some statistical uh, modeling. Try to create theoretical model. And also, 
when you have theoretical model or mechanistic model, you can use that to tailor made process or product with online control and go for industry 4.0 concept. That's the aim today. For modeling, there's also a question on long shelf life. Would engineer want to, you know, create a process, create a machine using, you know, process parameter different from heating, regular heating, using microwave, using sorts of things. Just to prolong longer and longer. I think we hope to prolong for 10 years. <laughs> I don't know who, maybe Dr. Ahmed tried to, you know, preserve food for 10 years or 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> then we, everyone have enough food to consume. <laughs> so, well, we put a question mark on that. Is that the food engineer really, you know, needs to do that? Or we can change a mindset. Because of transportation today, it's very convenient, right? It's not the question of transportation because in the past, yes, when you want to go from, you know, one country to another, we maybe, you know, require a, a month or two or a half of the year. But right now, transportation is very good. So the mindset of long shelf life, is it still important? Right? So maybe we can change into like uh, safe energy, the environmental, you know, friendly. Yeah. Uh, like trans wow, transformation. This is some idea that, you know, some of the consumer want to minimal process. Or we go for low cost. Some other mindset, or maybe go for uh, good nutrition. Right? Student can tell me if you can change to a new mindset. Right? If you want to tell the world that, okay, you know, what do you think? What kind of mindset do you want for, you know, food scientists to go, to use as a goal? Okay. Another thing issue in food engineer, not just the kinetics model, heat transfer model, also the mass transfer model. When we try to model a uh, mass transfer, when you look into papers, you will see a lot of you know mass transfer diffusion of thin layer, one dimensional mass transfer, right? Because it's simple. Everything can be assumed as one dimensional mass transfer. Why? Because two and three dimensional is really complicated, right? But right now with computer, you can do that so easily. But the skill, you have the skill to do three dimensional or not, right? So in the paper, uh, normally you assume mass transfer in food, right? As a pure diffusional phenomenon. What does it mean, pure diffusion? Just, you know, water molecule moving from one layer up, up to another, another layer to the surface. But this day they found that other mechanisms are very really important. So if you focus only pure diffusion using fixed law, using simple mass transfer, giving you, you know, to a long direction. Recently, a group of scientists suggesting very important phenomena, water flow by capillary, capillarity in vessel, <clears throat> in plants vessel. It's really have strong impact on drying and rehydration of plants, of pumpkins. So if we do this modeling using pure diffusion, we get the wrong mechanism. 
So this suggests, this evidence suggests us we have to stop doing mass transfer based on pure diffusion. We have to, you know, look into a real mechanism and develop that basic knowledge, especially capillary effect. And you try to do mechanism on the capillary effect using physical based model or theoretical model. Again, don't try to do empirical modeling. Well, at the beginning, you may need empirical modeling, but use that as a base to you know, collect knowledge and develop physical based modeling. For mass transfer, we come to talk about nutrition preservation. I believe every food science department in every country moves toward nutrition and health related, right? Also in U UNS. I, I also support going for nutrition preservation. What we have to do right now, the technology that the conventional technology, we know that it's, it's not enough to get, you know, good nutrition. There are people who try to develop new technology. In the past, people may not pay money for process that can give you good nutrition. But right now it's different, right? So you can think of new technology to get a lot of nutrition or functional food. There's uh, some interesting finding. This research, uh, research of using ethanol and ultrasound to accelerate drying and then, you know, get a lot of carotenoid. I think recently we've been using, I mean, we use ultrasound a lot. Ultrasound giving very good result on many things. And some other new technology for fortify nutrition into food, right? For example, we dry vegetable before putting, before fortifying with some nutrients, or we do micro encapsulation, aerosol, vacuum impregnation, aerosol assisted dyeing. Things like this will help you to fortify nutrition into the food body. And the issue now for nutrition, we have the new demands on customized, customized food to genetic characteristic and different lifestyles. If you heard that Nestle have launched a project in Japan, right? Nestle will produce daily menu to a member in this project. All the member have to send the saliva to check for the DNA. Then from that DNA information, they can calculate food, you know, meal, specifically for each person to maintain their healthy. It's been ongoing, it's not future, it's just happening, right? Why we can do that? Because for information about DNA, in the past, the technology is not advanced. If you wanna check the DNA of one person, right? You need one year, at least one year and one million baht for one person. But today, 
how long it takes. One day, how much? 10,000 baht. Very cheap. So I, I like to send my, you know, <laughs> I want to check my DNA too. Even though I'm old, I still want to live longer, right? <laughs> okay. So this is very new demands and technologically doable. So every student can send, you know, your DNA to check and then you can get advice from some company. Then it's a watch, you know, from England. If you input your DNA information into that watch and you can, you know, when you want to eat something with a barcode, you can use the watch to scan the barcode and it would, the watch will tell you you can eat that food or not based on your health situation genetically. Yeah. Well, Dr. Ahmed, I think I will live for 200 years. <laughs> 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 well, but I have to send my DNA to check first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. With our food engineer, I don't think you can do that because that involves a lot of uh, mathematical modeling. But I think right now the situation on a genetic, you know, and food relation is limited because modeling, I don't, well, it's, I don't think it's complete. Yeah, still a lot more of information need to be collect. So if you're in food science field and if you are a food engineer and you want to go for this area, I think it will be superb. Yeah. And it's very interesting thing. Yeah. See, we have, right now we have a lot of elderly. <laughs> yeah. And elderly persons having money to pay and they want to live longer. So you can sell this concept idea to the elderly. And also the, not just to live long, but to stay healthy or to be a good sport, sport person, right? If you do, want to run faster, if you want to swim faster, related to your genes, they can design food for that also. This is the trend. Because this is, well, only, well, there's a lot of information, a lot of research need to be done to go to that point. Recently, people, actually in the past, we focus on only formulations or ingredients, right? You focus only on like putting tocopherol, vitamin C, antioxidants, into food and how to process it to have a, you know, nutrition retain after the process as high as possible. But you focus on only the ingredient itself. But these day people focus on structure of the food. You see a lot of papers published on structural modification. Modify in terms of to make it preserve your functional ingredients. Modify in terms of making it digest at the organs, specific organ, right? Easy to digest easy to absorb and easy to use by body. That's why structure of the food become very important. When you're talking about structure, a lot of knowledge 
about food engineering, how to modify the structure with the ingredient, how to modify structure with the process. I will show you some. Okay. For example, ultrasound. See, I keep talking about ultrasound. I'm not working on ultrasound, but <laughs> another publish on ultrasound. Okay. Ultrasound processing. The researcher found that, well, you, you know the mechanism of ultrasound. I'll show you the uh, mechanism of ultrasound. One key mechanism is cavita uh, cavitation. Cavitation, do you know cavitation? Like this. Ultrasound is a wave, right? High frequency wave. When the wave moves through the food matrix, it will generate bubble, the air bubble inside the food matrix. The air bubble, right? When you keep applying ultrasound into the food matrix, bubble getting larger and larger and burns. Burns and corrupt. You imagine when ultrasound moving through your food matrix, either liquid or solid or semi-solid. Your foods always contain air, right? So ultrasound will magnify the air until it's burned, okay? It's being used in, 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 in uh, freezing also. I show you because this ultrasound and generating, serving as a ice nucleator. See, every point that having ice form, this is the burn location of the ultrasound. I show you this because it will let you see the burns of the ultrasound effect better. So these professors found that with the ultrasound burns effect of the bubble, it creates new structure, micro structure in the micro level, not the macroscopic level, right? It deep into the micro structure level. They use the guava as a poppy guava as a sample. They apply ultrasounds to the guava. And then they found that it generates holes or compartment in the cell. And that compartment can contain the nutrition better. See, if you want to add some nutrition into guava tissue, you can apply ultrasound. Like you sink that guava tissue into your uh, functional compound solution and apply ultrasound. That functional compound will go inside the guava tissue better. Aside from that, they found another benefit. The Jewish consistency is very good. And power sedimentation is reduced. So that's been not just good nutrition, also good presentation, right? Because good appearance. Of course, but ultrasound degrades some nutrients because it's generally some heat, right? And bursting effect maybe destroy the structure of the functional compounds. You have to optimize it. Talking about optimize, food engineer have to come to help on optimization, right? How you can optimize? You have to do modeling. Do modeling on the real thing. Remember that. Normally when we create our research method, we try to simplify the process and the food compounds. Right now, it's not the time. We have, it is the time to use real food and real process. Okay. And they found that not only 
you know, keeping the nutrient inside the tissue, when we eat it with that structure, with that microstructure of the ultrasound impact, it enhanced availability for absorption. I think this is very interesting. Okay. Well, I'm show, uh, showing you the ultrasound impact, not to support ultrasound. You can think of some other thing, right? Microwaves, uh, light, light may not be enough. <laughs> some voltage, stuff like that. You can try. And maybe combine microwave with ultrasound and, you know, with the lighting or whatever. When you come, like hurdle technology, right? When you combine, it has synergistic effect. It reduces the time, it reduces the heat impact. It may magnify the benefit to the food. That's the idea. Another area, these day people requirements, I think too much. <laughs> they don't want simple thing. They want exotic flavors, like you like uh, sticky rice and mango from Thailand. <laughs> exotic flavors, right? I, this is good. <laughs> okay. So people, when we say exotic flavors, different colors, different texture, I think because we can do more in food scientists. So we can serve others' desires of the human society. For example, age, like elderly people. Because that, that, that the sensation is reduced, right? And uh, they have swollen problems. So texture and flavors, taste things have to adjust for this specific group of, of, of consumer. And this day we focus on health, lifestyle, have to eat easy, convenient, in excited when eating, many things. Okay. But the highlight, I think, I don't know in your country, but in my country, we focus on elderly people. So texture modification in terms of uh, microstructure, macrostructure modification for elderly people, it's a really a big research area. I don't know, people want to use non-conventional technology, but I, I still think that conventional technologies also can modify structure, but I, you better combine a lot, um, you know, a lot of technology, multidisciplinary, to modify structure. As I said, structure is very important this day, because and structure also impact properties. When you modify structures, impact it will impact food properties. When it impact food properties, keep that in mind. When you do engineering, when properties of the food change, like thermal property, physical property change. The heat transfer chain, mass transfer chains, right? You have to do another scenario of the properties and the if, if impact on the food process and quality when you change the structure. So a huge new knowledge you have to develop. I'm, I'm feeling tired already because many things to be done, right? As I said, texture and, and structure is very important this day. So rheological property is the key, one key that you have to really understand. For example, these days, a lot of people, even very teenagers having reflux problem Ask yourself if you have reflux problem or not. What the reflux problem? When you eat food and you feel really heartburn, right? Really bad. 
Then you come to think, what happened? Is this the activity or is it the food? Is the issue of the food, right? So a group of researchers try to solve, use the uh, rheological properties of food to solve reflux problem when you're eating food. They think of like each person is, you know, in the stomach or the gastrointestinal tracts of each person is like a specific reactor. See, when they decide the experiment this day, they think of individual person, not in terms of uh, population, huge population. So when they study rheological properties, they think in terms of applying into in a specific individual persons, the different among persons, right? So when you decide experiment will be different from the past. Okay. So rheology, uh, rheological uh, properties of food, focusing on food flow through the stomach. For example, like uh, what kind of viscosity, right, of this liquid food you have to build to help the people with the reflux problems. You have to think of that things. Rheological properties become very, you know, important properties. And well-being about this issue, meaning keeping healthy and feeling, feeling good. So eating food have to be healthy and feeling good also. I think these days people really concerned about feelings. So when you eat food, you have to laugh. <laughs> oh, I don't know. When see, well, the requirement of consumers really affect our research point of view. Yeah, sometimes, I don't know, the direction should come from the end or should come from the <laughs> beginning, you know, from consumer or from the researcher. Sometimes we have to give uh, to, you know, information or knowledge to the consumer also. Because once they have requirements, we come and, and to have to use ingredient and process to modify. When you, we modify too much, they are afraid of our, you know, our modification approach. So I don't know, is it this day, is it the balance point or not? Okay, but people have to eat with feeling also. So not just here when we decide process. So we want to have food with basic nutrition, you know, and concern about intolerance, some allergies, and functional foods. I think allergies is becoming more and more important these days. Food allergics, I think there's more population having, you know, allergic to food. And also we have the, to do research on how product interact with human body. That's the, another key thing. Feeling, <laughs> I think it's difficult and I, I, I don't know, I, I, I don't think supporting this kind of uh, idea. So I'm a go, I will pass. <laughs> okay. See, for example, I think vegan, the concept, the feeling to food, right? The concept of eating too much meat, it's, 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 it's bad, right? But I don't know if student, I don't know, you can share me some idea on this later on. Like we think of uh, eating proteins from meat, from fish, it's bad. But you still need proteins. So you're asking food scientists to, you know, <laughs> get other sources of proteins, like plant-based proteins, very popular right now. 
Personally, I don't know. I, I, it's it's good, but but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of research working on that, especially insect proteins. I don't know in Indonesia, but in Thailand, yes, there's uh, some activities on insect proteins, and in Europe, I think uh, very dynamic insect proteins. Yeah. Why insects protein? Why plant-based protein? Because heat, meat protein, but our body want proteins, right? <laughs> and also, well, insect proteins becoming popular because of, uh, in, you know, feeding insect is requiring small use of water and land and emitting, you know, about greenhouse gas, whatever things, yeah. But, some in, I don't know, insects, uh, we, we don't know much of the microbiota and processing of the insects and the way to extract the proteins, you know, and, and purification of the proteins. I think we don't know much of that. Yes, if you want to know more, we want to put an effort on that. I, I, yeah, but at this point, we don't know much, but it, insect proteins are being said, you know, it's being so in, in Thailand also, and I've seen products from insect proteins and ever try to eat it. And I don't know, worry about my gut microbiota <laughs> would change or not. <laughs> and link to the DNA, I, yeah, well, okay. So that's a trend, we cannot help it, right? That's a trend, but trends from consumer point of view, isn't it? Oh, is this the trends from the scientists? I'm not sure. Dr. Ahmed can, can answer me later on then. <laughs> I maybe wake up one day and, you know, peeling my banana and see the plant protein in there or something like that. <laughs> and having insect, huh, Dr. Ahmed? <laughs> yeah, okay. That's the direction and personalized for health and beauty or very popular personal, you know, like food for, for healthy, like... Uh, collagen and, and vitamin C for white skin and stuff like that. And, you know, well, being popular right now. And of course, yes, we want beautiful and 3D printing, very popular, I don't know, in Indonesia. Well, and there's some research in Thailand also working on 3D printing for food, right? I think 3D printing, is, it's, it's a good concept. It's a good concept but a lot more to do and especially rheological properties of the product have to be really and you know understand and modeled then you can do very good 3d printing yeah and it's a good concept yeah. to print meat to print steak to print pad thai to print mango and and oh very good one day i hope i can you know can eat mango <laughs> from 3d printer yeah. See, I said, well, consumers having a lot of idea on anti-science and anti-vaccine, you know, now they cannot have the idea of anti-vaccine of COVID-19. I don't know when once COVID-19 vaccines came out, come out, who's going to be the first? I'll let Dr. Ahmed to be the first to try the vaccine. And <laughs> I wait for you for half of the year to see the impact. <laughs> see, it's come to the point that uh, I, yeah, we must teach the population, you know, what is the food processing and, and what is the healthier diet and, and what you, uh, yeah. And this day we use hydrocolloids a lot. I personally, in my research, we are, I also using hydrocolloids. As I said, because people are more, I, uh, they focus more on the structure modification, right? So they use, <laughs> that. What, first thing come to mind is hydrocolloid, right? <laughs> to modify the uh, biological properties and uh, well, structural properties. But I, yeah, but there's some group of research. I, I think that is very good to use the process instead of hydrocolloid. Yeah, 
try to use process, try to use a lot of factors to generate different structure. As I told you, the, the, the my uh, uh, ultrasound or uh, vacuum impregnation have uh, impact on microstructure. So you can think of uh, process parameters to modify the uh, structure of the food, right? Don't have to always thinking of a hydrocolloid, please. Yeah. Because, uh, well, process uh, come again when you talk about process, <laughs> new process, how the process impact on microbes, right? Yeah. So many questions, but we, we have to uh, do a lot of study, a lot of work, yeah. Food allergies, is, it, it's, it's really big problems right now, yeah. So food engineers have to think in of the way to <clears throat> modify the process because even this day, we can, uh, you know, solve the problem of cross-contamination of the... Uh, you know, allergies, food allergies. When we produce uh, some, because in, in process, we one process can be used for several products. So cross contam contamination will always occur. So you will see on the back of the package having perhaps, you know, possibly having nuts and stuff like that, right? So they, they, they don't intentionally put you know, not in the product, but they use the same line, the same process line to produce the product without nuts and nuts. So food engineer have to come and so how decide the machine to be easily clean or stuff like that. Yeah, prevent the cross contamination. That's the key thing. And uh, well, and have to, again, understand the process parameter from uh, non-conventional technology to see how it's impact the structure of all these allergenic cities. I mean, because how you modify, say, like nuts after passing through ultrasound, microwave, maybe the allergenic city of the nuts may be increased or reduced. You never know. You have to study that. Yeah. Because aside from uh, novel technology, it's, it's not ready. It, it, you, you still have question on, on uh, safety, on, on microbes. And don't forget to study the, you know, the concern on food allergies of those new technologies. Okay, and uh, of course, this day we have uh, climate change, right? So we try to use less water, less energy, and engineer try to modify some uh, product composition and structure. See, I say again, we use the word composition and structure, both, to enhance the heat transfer, see? Because food with some composition, like a lot of oil, will reduce the heat transfer, right? If you reduce oil, it will en increase the heat transfer to the food. So that means you reduce the energy to process that food. So the engineer have to use the knowledge of composition and structure modification, how to enhance the heat transfer through that food. And also, not just modification of the food itself, also have to modify the process. For example, trying to think of a new agitation system for thermal processing, like for example, retard, like stand, like stand still retort, we uh, invent uh, rotating retorts like that. And some other processing also using plus agitation system. For example, ohmic heating also, they, these days maybe stand still like, you know, system. So every technology can improve heat transfer using uh, appropriate agitation system. And also packaging, because sometimes we pre-pack 
food before heating or chilling, cooling. So the geometry of uh, packaging is very important. So there's an area to design, you know, packaging with good geometry to enhance his transfer also. Everything try to reduce uh, water and energy usage. And some people publish that microwave and omic heating is the alternative for heating product for better energy conservation, right? Uh, well, because it is requiring short time to increase the temperature of the food. Mm. Okay. Uh, another question is about global warming. We focus on global warming because I, about the food production in the fields, the productivity is reduced, right? Because the temperature is too hot and, and too dry. We focus on food security because of global warming. But one thing that we are missing is that like food security is more concerned on the quantity. We have enough quantity and accessible of, of, of the food. But food engineering, we concern on the food properties because the plant grow on higher temperature, right? So the food properties may change also. Once the food property change, the process maybe have to adjust. So we have to begin to study the properties of the food when we grow, you know, feed or feed the animal at higher temperature. Uh, packaging free also focus on renewable resources, recycle, biodegradable, and compostable. I think this is a very solid focus for packaging. We've been de being developed poly lactic acid or whatever things, but we it's not being used commercialized that much because of the. Uh, Efficiency, you know, performance and also the pricing, yeah, relative to the uh, common packaging, yeah. <clears throat> this is really the focus of uh, China and, and US and, and Russian and maybe Indonesia. Elon Max to go to Mars, right? <laughs> <laughs> Creating the well spaceship with that uh, vacuum tunnel, whatever, and mission to go to Mars. I think it's a very solid plan for some uh, countries, right? So research area for food to serve this plan, I think is ongoing. It's been many more than 20, 30 years, I suppose. But these days, I think people really focus like uh, serious, take it serious because maybe we can go to Mars very soon. <laughs> uh, okay, well, for uh, the idea of uh, taking food from Earth to Mars, we have specific type of food, right? For example, have to be in a light weight and, and long shelf life. Maybe this necessarily to be long, right? Because the transportation it's, it, it's still taking long time, right? So like freeze dry product and, and pre-process that, that's, you know, long shelf life is very important. But not so long for producing food from earth. They want to produce food on Mars, right? They want to be able to do plantation on Mars. So you have the raw material and also processing on Mars. Well, if you want to do processing, that means you have to have machines and which you don't have the, well, material or resources to build machine on Mars. You have to build a machine here on Earth, right? So 3D printer is a good concept to, you know, build that kind of machine and, you know, one machine can produce, you know, uh, bakery products, noodles, um, steak and using putting in powder and liquid into the instrument, a very small, you know, compact instrument, but 
very effective uh, instrument, you know, and bring up to Mars and process food to the human on Mars. I don't know. Yeah. See, if you want to do research, kind of processing on Mars, you have to rethink of everything. Why? Because Mars, how about uh, gravity effect, right? Different gravity effect on Mars and on Earth. Because engineers have to think of parameters that you know, would affect the uh, food properties and, and processing on quality and safety of the, of the food. If you're thinking of process to be used on Mars, I think you have to dealing with not regular conduction, convection. You have to have a lot of uh, gravitational acceleration involved, mass, heat transfer, diffusion, whatsoever. And you cannot use water as a sort of heating. You cannot use steam, right? Because water is so precious and you don't have a lot of water on Mars. So you have to use something else. So you have to think of anything. Do you have electricity? Maybe it's easy to have electricity with solar cells or whatsoever, yeah. But if you want to go into uh, this research area, I think that's, that's very, very interesting, yeah, to, to go for that. But you have to think of some, uh, well, uh, different uh, parameters, yeah. All right, done. <laughs> So I, I like to make a conclusion that, okay, we try to, uh, for engineer, we try to develop machines, we try to develop software to take us to the industrial 4.0, like uh, IT, computerized and automation and robots. And for one target, I mean, like, because you put a lot of money and put a lot of effort, so you may, may I don't think you will hope to sell uh, cheap things like low cost, no, because you put a lot of force, maybe you want to create premium products. Uh, it's good, but uh, so uh, when time pass and you can do that easy, you may think, come back and think of producing low cost, nutritional and pleasant food products for the uh, population and focus on new approaches. New approaches meaning like combining several factors and trying to do experiment on real situation, real food, real process. That's the way to go, yeah. And what next for food engineers? I, yeah, we try to, uh, uh, you know, uh, collect information of food composition, structure and processing to help uh, create safety, preservation, nutrition, sensorial well-being and environment, good for environment. And what's the next step then? I still don't have the answer for that, but I think uh, students, they are young, they have a new and dynamic you know, thought, maybe they can give me some advice then. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Professor Warapon, for your nice and insightful presentation, I think. <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed my talk. <laughs> we truly gain so much new information as well as a uh, new point of view about recent update on food engineering. Uh, for example, the food processing in the Mars, I think is very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I will follow your work then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dear students, staff, and other participants, I'm sure you all have many questions out there. Please, if you want to ask directly to the speaker, please use raise hand feature in the Zoom, unmute your microphone, and mention your name clearly before asking. In other way, you can also type your question in the chat room here in Zoom or YouTube channel. Okay, uh, we have question from my college professor. Yes. So the first one is uh, maybe she is uh, like uh, durian chips in Thailand. So the question is about durian chips in Thailand. Durian chips in Thailand. <laughs> so you want me to bring it to you? Is that the question? 
No, no, no. I'm, I'm very happy to do so after the pandemic. <laughs> okay, that is the interesting question. Maybe what kind of process is used to make durian chips in Thailand? Ah, <laughs> it's only vacuum frying or freeze drying or maybe you can ask for the question, Professor. Well, it's very really simple. Yeah, hmm. we do uh, vacuum fry. Vacuum fry. Yes, but oh. actually, you know what? And there's uh, many technology. It depends mm. on the uh, level that they put the uh, uh, the product position. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, they you can use a simple uh, deep frying. Okay. Yeah, and okay. also do uh, the oven, hot oven. Okay. Uh, air right to okay. to kind of uh, taking out some of the fat. Okay. Uh huh. And the second technology we do the uh vacuum frying. Vacuum frying. Yeah. Oh. And the third one we also have freeze dry. Freeze dry. But yeah. this one is more expensive, I think. More the expensive, price. and I don't <laughs> like the flavor. <laughs> <laughs> and the texture, I think it's it's the texture is oh, okay. more puffy for the the, the uh, freeze dry one. Uh -huh. I like the, the uh deep fry and plus okay. oven dry. Yeah, and also the uh oven. A vacuum uh, fry, yeah. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. And then the another question, which is wisher? Maybe the question related about the environmental friendly, because in your slide you mentioned about that. Which <laughs> is wisher? We use can or butter to package food based on environmental issue. I think wow. it's a good question. <laughs> uh, can or package? Cans or um, butter, butter. Uh, can and bottle. Can or butter. The what kind of bottle then? Is plastic or glass? Oh, maybe, maybe, uh, plastic. Maybe plastic. Oh, biodegradable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a packaging person, but okay. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking out from my feeling. I, I okay. Yeah. Well. From the environmental point of view, I would think that uh, bottle is least recyclable. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I would support that then. Yeah. Okay, and then maybe in the last question from my uh, what kind of method could be applied to dry help in micro and small enterprise without high damage to function compound of the herbs? Maybe she want to uh, drink process uh, the herb, but you want to ask what the kind of method could be applied to dry herb in micro. Maybe uh, you want to know what the best method for the drying herbs to preserve the nutritional value of oh, the herbs. Drying, drying herbs. Oh, okay, right? yes, yes. Uh, what's the best way to drying herbs? To preserve, uh, focus on the nutrition, right? Oh yes, yes, yes. So I, I think it depends on the properties of that functional compound. Okay. Uh -huh. Is it heat sensitive or not, right? Mm. Yeah. If it's heat sensitive, so, so you because drying drying technologies, there's a a lot of technologies. Mm. Right, so it depends on the properties of of the functional compounds that you're interested in, like um, pH stable, or you know, you have to see. As I said, first of mm. all, you have to look at the product okay. and then process. You have okay. to look into both product. Okay. You have to look in terms of composition. So the 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 compound itself, what the properties, and also the other ingredients. Okay. Right, because other ingredients can uh, enhance or inhibit the degradation of that compound. So that the in terms of composition itself, you have to look in terms of composition first, right? Or okay. maybe you can use some other compounds to uh, protect that specific functional compounds. Okay. Okay. Then okay. You, after you manage with the compound, you manage the structure. When you manage the structure, you can use process to manage the structures. For example, if you apply the um, ultrasound to burst the cell, so the drying will be very quick. 
Oh, or yeah, even yeah, you yeah. use Wacom. So yes. I try myself. So the cell like aloe vera plant, right? Mm. Leaves. So when I apply small Wacom in a short time, maybe one to two minutes, it accelerates the drying rate oh, 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 oh. triple times. I mean, like maybe I need to dry for six hours after I do Wacom first to break the cell. But see, when you use vacuum, there's no heat involved. It's good, right? So when you do drying, from I can reduce from six hours into only two hours. Okay. Only okay. a short time of vacuum. Okay, okay. So see, do you have to combine a lot of parameters, right? So modify the structure before drying. I think that's the key thing. Modify composition, modify the structure, like breaking the cell, breaking the cell with heat, if possible, if not possible, using some of the factors like Wacom, like pressure, ultrasound, like short ultrasound or short microwave, whatever. Yeah, will accelerate the drying. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, and oh. also see, it modify the structure, then you can extract. The extract extraction process will be easier also. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Okay. We still have many questions. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, please be patient. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, I have question from my new student. My new student. Because oh. uh, yes. And nice to meet you, new student. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. The name is Bagas Akis Havana Purwa. Uh. The question is very interesting related about the 4.0 industry. Uh -huh. So the question is, what are the food manufacturing model used by industrial what keeping industry 4.0 maybe the question is uh, what the kind of the food industry can be applied at 4.0 concept what the, you what mean... the can but what what the kind of the food processing maybe what the product of food processing can be applied the 4.0 model you mean right now Yes, 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 oh, yes. Okay, right now, what kind of food process that yes, yes. already get up to the 4.0? Okay, yes, yes. Oh, I see. Um, I think it's the 4.0 meaning every single step, right? Mm, uh, every okay. single step have to be automatic. Okay. Okay, so... That have to be something, I think, as I said, the um, automation is very good for the section of movement. Mm. Moving, cutting, or mechanical kind of things. Mm. Yeah, these robots, this automation is, is, is perfect because we have computer of imaging, of uh, x-ray, of, of 3D, and laser cutting. Okay. Moving from, from place to place and, and cutting, I think that's a perfect 4.0. Okay, okay. But aside from that, no, not okay. yet. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay, we have uh, another question from our student. I think it's a good question. And then maybe there is the big problem in the developing country, like Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the question is for developing country, what do you think? It is appropriate to replace human labor in food industry to machinery. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good question from the student. <laughs> yeah, you're afraid of uh, no job, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm afraid of losing my job also. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand the students' feeling because, you know, yes. now they're studying and then to the point they graduate, <laughs> maybe the technology is so advanced and, and yes. you know, they have no job anymore. Mm. I, well, I, I, I heard, uh, you know, Bill Gates, right? Bill Gates said uh, we will come to an era that uh, human beings life will be easy don't have to do anything but can survive <laughs> <laughs> just leave everything for the robots to work for us okay uh, i well i think uh well things change and i think it's the uh, technology come to serve us in the right time because uh we we have a uh, 
in the world population human population is reducing so there's uh, enough job for the remaining amount of the population i suppose but uh don't worry because uh see the thing is that a right skill a right skill yes of course some skill will be obsolete for sure yes yes i yeah. think <laughs> yeah i well you cannot avoid that because uh, <laughs> see that's why food engineering is so important right <laughs> yes, yes. because it, it see the society moving into the direction uh, that pe human being is the person who who setting the goal so when you set the goal see you set the goal that to have a 4.0 industrial concept so meaning auto 100 100% automation so no human being maybe uh, but there's some some skill mm. see modeling skill engineering skill yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, and yes, yes. Uh, not many people are doing this yes 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 yeah so good good thing is that not many persons are doing this meaning this technology will move slow <laughs> but not slow actually yeah and and because of pandemic i think uh people have to rethink yes of course pandemic if you have automation process uh it you still can run your business right but you have to think even though you can run business but the economic is really bad who's you gonna sell to right so nobody will buy your product anyway so even though you have automation you can you know keep it running but nobody will buy your product so you cannot use your productivity anyway so thing will balance don't worry but the key thing is that you have to develop a good appropriate skill okay thank you very much <laughs> I, i think it's very important to our student Uh, regarding the 4.0 and then what the chance of the job after he graduated or she graduated <laughs> okay exactly. thank you very much exactly thank you yes. very much okay we have another question from my colleagues from dr dimas radian uh, he wondering about 3d printing i think it's very interesting in the food uh, engineering mm -hmm. so he want to ask How about the 3D printing uh, technology in the Kasetsat University? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe do you have uh, 3D printing in Kasetsat University? Maybe we yes, can. Yes. Yes. Oh yes. Okay. Well, I I actually monitor one research project. I mean, oh. uh, well, what I am well, I sincerely speaking. I'm not appreciated on the the project being mm -hmm. uh, working. I mean, in the team research team, uh, yeah. But yeah, there's uh, there are teams to work on 3D printing oh. technology. Yes, oh. but moving very slow oh. because I I think there's um, as I said, uh, 3D printing uh, requires the knowledge of food engineering a lot of food yes, engineering yeah. yeah yes yes and require a well, mechanical engineer food engineer and, and of course food science also yeah so i think uh we move very slow in in, in this area but i think it's a, a way to go for and and i've been when when i was studying and i was doing my phd at rutgers rutgers having project from nasa also to oh. uh, yeah that's that's why i i, I understand their concept of oh, creating okay. machine very small and light machine and to do many things at that time they're thinking of uh, extruder concept okay okay, so okay to be the best uh, concept for the machine uh, using on mass yeah So the extrude, extruder concept is a, a key knowledge for a 3D printer also because extruder having mixing and heating in the same machine. So you can do cooking, blending in one machine and, and it can be small. 
Okay, very interesting. Yes. I think. But if you want to, to well, we can create uh, together. <laughs> oh, yes, of but course. To me, well, to me, I, I, I think it's, it's very, well, very difficult. For, it is quite a com complicated area oh, okay, also. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you very much for your answer. <laughs> we have uh, one question, another question from my colleagues. Dr. Sterling Rumarifiani, maybe uh, she want to ask directly okay, to you openly. Great. Yes, nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> we can hear the beauty voice of Dr. Sterling Rumarifiani. Hi, hi, I'm seeing you. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> okay, good time is yours, Dr. Rupin. Yes, hi, thank you. Hello, good afternoon, Prof. Warapon. Yes, good afternoon. Rumarifiani, I'm very happy to join in your lecture today. Oh, happy to see you. <laughs> sure, I think. Uh, as the explanation in your presentation, uh, food engineering is connected to produce uh, food with uh, high nutrition quality, uh, sensory quality, and also longer shelf life as well as healthy food, right? So, yeah. Uh, I'm wondering, is there any suggestion about using or uh, utilize uh, food engineering to produce novel food? You know, novel food is uh, closely related to the functional food uh, with some distinctive, uh, for example, that uh, novel food is a uh, uh, food that uh, don't have a history of uh, consumption. Thank you, uh, Professor Warapon. You mean like a very novel food? Yes, I mean uh, using uh, food engineering to produce a novel food. Uh, some uh, food like a functional food, uh, don't have a history of consumption. Ah, yeah. Well, I, I think uh, well, as as in my presentation, right? We trying to create a uh, new structure, food with new structures which we have never been eaten before. I think yeah. yes, in the market, yes. There's some there's paper on that, and especially for some uh, like novel technology, emerging technologies like. Uh, Elect power electric field or um, some uh, magnetic resonance field. So food when passed through this kind of uh, processing will change in terms of composition and also structure. And of course you cannot eat this type of product because the um, FDA have not approved, right? In the past, maybe like the products like high pressure rhization products also cannot be eaten, cannot be sold because it is not approved yet. But high pressure is already approved, right? And uh, so some uh, emerging technology, I, I believe that there's, especially like, for example, like high pressurized food in Thailand, uh, FDA is not approved. Yeah, so there's a lot of papers published, um, you know, food modification and, and not being so in the market. Yeah, and a lot of impact. Yes, the focus on the impact on uh, nutrients, structure, and also digestion, absorption. Yes. Okay. Am I much uh, get the answer or not? for your clear explanation. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Pippin, for your question. Maybe another question? Dr. Jukrufus Zaman, are you there? Okay, we have a question from my colleague, okay, Dr. Much. Jukrufus Zaman. Okay, time is yours. Doctor, oh, thank you, Doctor Ahmad. Uh, very good morning, Professor. Oh, hi, uh, you're back. Yeah. <laughs> My name is uh, Zaman. <laughs> yeah. I will always remember Kasir Sat uh, from the Chatu Chak Market site. <laughs> but previously, I, uh, actually. Uh, <laughs> Previously, I have deal with uh, with Professor Warapa Mahan uh, oh, Mahakan okay. Chanakul. Yeah. yeah, my She's co from Kasiasat also, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, 
during my my work at uh, University Putra Malaysia we, we deal with uh, mycotoxin with uh, with her ah yeah she's good on that yeah okay uh, professor uh, yeah professor Warapon, uh, I, I will ask something rela uh, related to food safety uh, relation of food safety and food engineering because uh, uh, frankly speaking uh, i'm the one who who, who know uh, nothing about food engineering <laughs> because um, I'm very weak in, in, in mathematics. That's why I'm focused at food microbiology. <laughs> uh, uh, and food microbiology is really hard for me also. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but no, uh, uh, it cannot be denied that mathematics is uh, it's very important to uh, every uh, field of uh, study. Yes. Even uh, we are not in food microbiology, uh, we are developing what is called uh, modeling in uh, in microbiological risk assessment. Yes. And, and yeah, okay. and I'm uh, start uh, starting to learn uh, about this thing. Okay. The one that I want uh, to ask uh, questions uh, on you is related to fish sauce. Uh, I already work uh, in fish sauce for almost ten years. Uh, wow. In my project, and that's why I I, I know uh, maybe a few things uh, related to the fish sauce industry in Thailand or in Malaysia, and uh, as well as in Indonesia. Uh, as as you know that uh, there is a big problem in a fish sauce product everywhere, uh, everywhere in 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 every part of this world. Uh, the problem is histamine. Mm. That uh, until today, the formation of histamine is remain unavoidable during the fermentation of fish sauce. Uh, I uh, I have seen uh, one of fish sauce factory in Thailand. If I'm not mistaken, is Pichai, Pichai mm. fish sauce industry. Uh, they operate uh, a quite modern uh, uh, equipment for processing the the fish sauce, beginning from from the mixing of uh, salt and uh, and fish and uh, and anchovy yeah, as, as a raw material as a raw material, uh, the one that I want to ask you is, uh, what do you think about the contribution of uh, food engineering, especially uh, in this fish sauce uh, industry? Because as uh, as we know that uh, Thailand occupied more than fifty percent market share of fish sauce in the world. And the problem is still remain there, the, the histamine, because uh, as you know, once the histamine is for produced in a in a food uh, in a food product, no no such way to eliminate uh, histamine without destroying the food, because uh, it is quite stable at 190 degrees Celsius, and it is. Uh, uh, have no aroma and have uh, and, uh, and also colorless, so it's, it's very difficult. So, uh, do you know uh, the situations of the fish sauce industry in uh, in in Thailand? Whether they are already overcome this problem, uh, overcome this problem by using the modern food uh, engineering uh, method. Uh, I just want to 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 know your opinion about this, uh, Professor Warapon. Thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know much of the fish sauce in Thailand. Or, yeah. Well, uh, so if you ask me about the situation of histamine problems in, 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 in Thailand, I cannot give you an answer for that. Yeah. But if you, uh, but I, if you're asking about how food engineer can help to solve the problems, I, I can just give uh, talking about some principle yes for, uh, like we have to know that histamine is being produced by microbes or just simple uh, uh, chemical reaction right yeah. to solve this if either chemical reaction or microbial production we can do mathematical modeling on the impact right on the amount of the uh, histamine because when you do experiment, you, you cannot uh, do a lot of experiment because it's too expensive, right? Because if you use modeling, you can do at a certain uh, level, level of, of parameters and then create modeling and predict or optimize the process to, to the point that to get a minim, minimum of histamine. That, then, then you can do that. 
So if we understand the mechanism uh, and, and factors that imp, uh, impact on the production of histamine, then we do the modeling on that. We can use modeling to find out the good, the appropriate uh, processing parameters to get the histamine at the minimum level. Yes, because uh, it is formed by the bacteria, which is a, a living a creature. Ah. Uh, and uh, as, uh, uh, as we know, it is very difficult to control all factors uh, related to the living uh, material, uh, yeah. like the bacteria. Yes, uh, yes. Maybe just, uh, uh, I just want to know maybe, uh, what is the limitations of the of the food uh, engineering, especially in, in the modeling system, uh, and how close uh, the predictions or, or maybe the result of the modeling system is uh, uh, related to the to the to the real situation. Uh, yeah, well, because if, if if it is a non-living material, at least it is it is uh, much more easy, much more e easier to to control uh, all the factors affected uh, them. Yes. But, here we are talking about the living uh, creature. Yes, I understand. Yes, I understand. But uh, uh, modeling uh, in terms of uh, microbial growth, we, we kind of very advanced on that. Yeah, we can combine several factors and consider at once. See, uh, for example, uh, the growth of uh, the microbes can be impacted by temperature, salt concentration, pH, oxygen level, and carbon dioxide level. Well, because at least in the manufacturing process, it's a control, it's a closed system, right? So uh, you can do modeling um, very simple. You, you still can, it, it, it's doable. Even though it's involved several factors, it involved not only one factor. If you talk, if you worried about, okay, modeling can do only one factor's impact, right? No. See, I, I have, for example, I have published my paper on modeling of three factors at once. And we can evaluate these three factors impact on Mela reaction, for example. Like we, we evaluate the temperature impact, pH, and also the substrate concentration on Maillard reaction. In your case, the same thing. Uh, modeling skills, we can uh, model impact of several factors. Especially when we have computer, we can do the calculation and optimization. Uh, it's very simple. And uh, see, I, we try to, you, to do the uh, mechanistic modeling, not probabilistic or statistic modeling. Yeah, and then when you interpret the data, that you it's meaningful. <laughs> I don't know if yeah. you yeah. Yes. So when when I listening to uh, your information, it's really good information. I think I think it's it's doable this day to to do modeling on uh, you know histamine to help to reduce amount of histamine and understand the the process parameters, how to control the level to minimize the level of histamine. Yes. I think it's doable. Uh, <laughs> All right, Prof. <laughs> Thank you for your I, I, I can share you my paper of doing uh, modeling on three uh, factors. <laughs> but yes, not many research. And if you look through the papers, uh, majority would publish on one, one factor or two factors, like temperature and time, right? That's, that's common. Very few and very rare papers publishing on you know more than two factors, but I I I just published in two thousand twenty. Yes, we have four and you see temperature, pH concentration and time. You can study and and learn how to do modeling in terms of multi factors impact on 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 quality and safety. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, one, one, last, one last question. One last question. Yes. Uh, uh, do you have uh, any, any exit strategy or maybe how to start loving modeling and mathematics? <laughs> 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 Same back to
to your house to, because you know, you know, you know I'm, 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 I have a I have a bad experience with <laughs> No, see, thing is that we don't need to love everything, but we, you know, help each other. Okay. All right. Yeah, all that's right. the easiest way. We help each other. <laughs> Hurdles, see, right. combine factor, combine people. <laughs> yeah, I love, I love to, to really work with you on that. Yes. All okay. right. Thank you very much. If, if you Dr. have Dr. data, Dr. I, can, yeah. Yeah, I can help uh, on modeling. Yes. All right, thank okay, you. thank you. Thank you. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have much time, but we still have one question from my college professor, uh, from Miss Anastriani Yuli Patun. <laughs> she want to ask directly, open me. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're so young, your professor. Uh, wow. <laughs> She look for postgraduate study. Uh, I, I'm the oldest student here. <laughs> Almost graduated. <laughs> okay, time is yours, Mrs. Yani. Yeah, thank you, uh, Pak Ahmad. So, Adika. <laughs> From Yani Ka. Did I say it right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you, Prof. Marapon, for your very interesting uh, sharing today. Uh, actually, my question, maybe the last question in this session, is a very silly uh, question and maybe a bit personal. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sorry in advance. Uh, I mean, I have a question for you as a food engineer expert. In your daily life, uh, which one do you prefer or which one do you choose more often? between uh, the whole processed food or the minimally processed food? Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Good question, I think. And why? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I have to answer like in personal, right? Personal point of view, no, not just as the food side. Uh, yeah, well, I love, you know, I love natural, so oh, okay. <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will lose my job. <laughs> <laughs> well, but yes, but yes, um, if we process food properly, yeah, mm. uh -huh. keep in mind on health of uh, consumers, yes, mm. I think we can develop good process, yes. I believe okay. that, yes. See, so I don't care if it's to be minimal or it's to be heavily processed. As long as we understand and, and you know, we don't mislead, <laughs> yeah, uses of the process and ingredients, yes. Okay, okay. thank you. It's very smart <laughs> thank answer. <you. laughs> thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Very good. <laughs> Oh, I think the Thailand language from Miss Yan is very good. Yeah, maybe... she, she planned to come here, uh, isn't it? Oh, yes, yes, of I course. will. Um, <laughs> maybe she can... Don't forget to apply, apply for funding. Huh? We yeah. to... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Please share if any occasion, bro. <laughs> <laughs> she got master from Wageningen University, Netherlands, Professor. Huh? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Warapon, for answering all the questions. There are still more questions left, I think, since the time is so tight. I have to close <laughs> this Q and A wow. session. <laughs> I'm having uh, fun, Dr. Ahmed. Okay, <laughs> you stop thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize to those host questions are not yet unsure. Okay, we have some appreciation for you to Professor Warapon. We would like to give a little appreciation for you, a piece uh, of certificate to thank your presence today and for insightful wow. presentation, I think. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Maybe I can email this certificate to you. Okay. Okay. And you so, can give me in person when I was I will be there. <laughs> <laughs> Since we could not give it physically to you because of the pandemic COVID nineteen, I think. Yes, I understand that. Yeah. Okay. 
Once again, thank you very much for being with us today, Professor Warapon. We look forward to see you in other agenda. <laughs> As a moderator, I'm sorry if there is any mistake in delivering this session. Thank you. I give the time back to MC. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon. Thank you, Associate Professor Dr. Warapon Gunsuktip and Dr. Ahmad Edwan Ariantoro for the fruitful session and interesting discussion. Thank you for sharing once again. Yeah, thank you very much. Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, now we have come to the end of our agenda. We hope you found this afternoon's presentation as informative and insightful. I, my son Tariksa, as the Master of Ceremony and on behalf of the organizing committee, would like to apologize for any possible mistake done during this event. I would like to remind you that tomorrow we still have another lecture by Professor Dr. Irwandi Jaswir from International Islamic University Malaysia with a topic of food safety and halal management. So don't forget to join us again at 10 a.m. Thank you very much for spending time with us today. Good afternoon and see you tomorrow. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah.